From 29 June to 1st July 2021, we at Auction House Künke hold our anniversary sale 350. On offer are Brunswick losers of exceptional quality from the Friedrich Popkin collection. Let's take a look at some rarities. This coin type is known as Julius Löser. Julius Lösers are the oldest Lösers that exist. Our specimen was minted in 1588. On the obverse, it features Duke Julius of Brunswick Lüneburg in armor and with battle eggs. Around him are four concentric circles. In the circles, you can see the symbols of the seven planets, the symbols of the twelve zodiac signs, the title of the ruler and his motto. The reverse is even more interesting. It also features two concentric circles. The legend in them reads, translated into modern English, new coin from Heinrichstadt, minted according to the weight and fineness determined by the imperial diet called Brunswick Julius Löser, worth eight thalers. The only reason why the value of a coin needs to be specified this precisely is that people didn't know it yet. In fact, Duke Julius introduced a new form of money modeled after the North German Portugalösers. This is an extremely rare half Portugaleser of Duke Johann Adolf of Holstein Gottorp created between 1586 and 1607 in Lübeck, about the same time as our Julius Löser. Coins of this denomination had originally been minted in Portugal. As they were very popular, coins of the same weight and fineness were minted in northern Germany too. Regarding the design, they look similar to our Julius Löser. They feature an indication of their value in one of several circles. Let's recall that there were two types of coins in early modern times. Poor change that was only valid in a limited territory and coins made of good silver and gold that maintained their value. There was a market for coins of consistent value that could be used internationally. Customers were willing to pay a substantial premium to obtain these coins. In 1573, every taler added small change worth one taler and a marine groschen to the state treasury. Every Julius Löser of eight talers cost an additional amount of 12 marine groschen. This means that the proceeds could be multiplied by one and a half while the number of issued coins could be reduced. That's why Julius Lösers were good business and a profitable way to market the silver supplied by the mines of the Harz Mountains to the Dukes of Brunswick. The depictions of some Lösers indicate that they are made of Harz silver. This Löser of four Reichsthaler of 1625 features St. James. He is depicted as a pilgrim with a walking stick, wearing a heavy cloak and a felt hat as worn by all those who went on foot to Santiago de Compostela to visit the tomb of the Apostle. Frederick Ulrich, who had this coin minted, was a convinced Lutheran who did not believe in the power of the saints. St. James only served him as a symbol, alluding to the fact that the silver came from the mine of St. James in the Lautental, as the Latin inscription says. Its translation reads, Behold, the formerly abandoned Lautental mine of metal-bearing St. James now supplies us with an abundance of silver. The Thirty Years' War also had an impact on the yield of the Harz mines. It was not until 1681 that the mine of St. James could be modernized at great cost. The Dukes of Brunswick hoped for a high return, as the Latin inscription on this Lursa says. The translation of the legend reads, You, gracious God, will return the money we invested. After the Thirty Years' War, no one wanted to name a mine after St. James anymore. Without further ado, the mine was renamed 
the luck of Lautenthal. Instead of St. James, this loser of five Reichsthales from 1685 depicts a female lute player as Lautenthal means lute valley in German. This loser of three Reichsthalers was minted in 1665. It features a savage man in a dress made of leaves with a tree trunk as a walking stick. The depiction may indicate that the silver came from a very specific area of the Harz. The Dukes of Brunswick had a mining workshop called Wildemann, which means savage man in English. However, the image of the savage man does not only represent this town. He is a symbol of untamed wilderness. Him holding the coat of arms was a powerful image used by the Dukes of Brunswick. In this way, they indicated how much power the silver mines of the hearts gave them. At the feet of the savage man, we see a mining scene. On the left, two miners are pushing a tipper wagon full of silver-bearing rock out of the gallery. On the right, two men operate the winch in order to lift a bucket full of precious ore. Such glimpses of mining scenes can be found on numerous losers. Here we see a mountainous wooded landscape in the background, the hearts. On the left and in the center there are two tent-like whims. Inside them was a complex hose-driven mechanism for lifting heavy loads. The energy generated here was transmitted by means of a linkage. On the right There are two entrances leading into the gallery. The ore that the miners extracted there was brought up by means of the wind on the right side. In the background we see the town, perhaps Zellerfeld, where this loser of ten Reichsthalers was minted in 1638. Augustus the Younger rides across the mining landscape. The remarkably highlighted word tandem to his left gives us a clue as to why this loser was minted. Tandem means finally, and indeed Augustus the Younger had to wait for several years until the Emperor finally recognized him as Duke of Brunswick Wolfenbüttel. The Duke celebrated his elevation in statues on the occasion of his birthday in 1638 with a great festival. To mark the occasion he had losers of various denominations minted and this piece was one of them. High-ranking guests received a loser of high value as a gift, while less important guests got a loser of low value. This loser was also minted for a birthday celebration. It was made in 1666, when Duke Augustus the Younger celebrated his 88th birthday. Four different versions of this coin type are on offer in auction 350. Losers of 5, 4, 2 and 1.5 Reichsthalers. But these aren't all versions that were minted on the occasion. In total, we know of seven different denominations ranging from 10 to 1.5 Thalers. Issuing so many versions was necessary in order to give each guest a representative coin whose value exactly corresponded to the statues of that guest. Birthdays weren't the only occasions suitable for celebrating festivals and minting losers. The same was done on baptism and funerals. Both losers and celebrations were used to demonstrate one's importance. This is illustrated by this loser of four Reichsthales, minted by Ferdinand Albert I of Brunswick Bevern in 1670 to commemorate the death of his son. There are two things that might surprise you about this coin. The commissioner of this issue was an unimportant sovereign of a tiny principality And a person honored with this loser is a baby that, like many children in the 17th century, died shortly after birth. Why was such an elaborate issue created despite all this? That's easy to explain. Ferdinand Albert was ambitious. 
he probably planned to use the baptism of his firstborn son to impress his peers with a splendid feast. When his son died prematurely, he did not cancel the feast, but turned it into a funeral. That's why an unimportant infant was honored with a loser of a kind that only very few powerful princes ever received. Even though losers obviously had a face value and could be used as coins to settle bills, they were much more, and those who commissioned them took much pride in these pieces. For example, Christian Louis of Brunswick-Lüneburg celebrated himself and his family with this loser. The piece of eight Reichsthalers, minted in 1654, depicts the horse of the House of Wealth, wreathed with laurel by the hand of God. Below it, we see the prince's new capital, Salle. The model for this depiction was probably the Salle city view that Matthäus Merian published in his topography of Brunswick in the same year. But also, those who received the losers took great pride in them. They carefully kept these showpieces in their coin collection in order to demonstrate that the Dukes of Brunswick considered them important enough to honor them with a loser on a special occasion. After all, already in early modern times, collecting losers was the supreme discipline of numismatics. We at Auction House Künke would be glad if we sparked your interest. We would be delighted if you took part in our anniversary auction sale 350. Given the current situation, we recommend bidding by phone or via internet. If you have any questions regarding these options, please do not hesitate to contact us.